Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm continuing to cover some of the decks that uh, performed at the World Championship, but uh, how they were upgraded for um, the Brothers War with some new additions to the deck. Um, this, de this deck here, actually, that I'm doing is uh, Jund Windgrace. Um, it's a, kind of a, like a land ramp uh, reanimator deck, but um, it actually did not make the top eight, or I'm sorry, the top four of the World Championships, but it did fairly well um, in, in the standings. It was piloted by Reed Duke, and uh, he's actually one of my favorite players and one of the most technically sound players that uh, um, I've seen for Magic, and he had a pretty fun innovation with this deck, and I, I wanted to give it a shot. Um, so the, the deck is pretty much relatively the same with the exception of I added uh, four of the Titania Voice of Gaia just due to the fact that it, it uh, f has just natural synergies with the uh, Soul of Windgrace. And um, I also added the other half of the meld card, Argoth Sanctum of Nature, uh, four of each of those. And I did end up taking out, um, well, I, I swapped out four land for the Argoth Sanctum of Nature. But as far as spells go, um, to make room for Titania, I removed one Blood Tithe Harvester and one uh, Lanamore Loam Speaker, and then one cut down and the dress. The cut down and dress were moved to the, the sideboard and just a straight up cut for Loam Speaker and the Blood Tithe Harvester. And the idea of the deck is to um, get lands onto the battlefield or into your graveyard um, to help you transform Titania. And uh, you can use lands, you can discard lands from your hand to uh, activate the abilities for Soul of Windgrace. And whenever he attacks or enters the battlefield, those those lands you ended up discarding, you can just come back into play tapped, which is pretty nice, which kind of ramps you to let you cast the Titan of Industry um, or something like Cruelty of Gix uh, and things like that. And the ways to get other ways to get uh, creatures and lands in your graveyard are using Titan, or I'm sorry, Liliana's uh, discard ability and also the Chapter 2 of the Fable of the Mirror Breaker ability. Um, and we just have uh, a few removal spells to help you uh, interact with your opponent's threats with Cut Down, Infernal Grasp, River Tears Charm, which makes them sacrifice their largest creature or um, Planeswalker. But it also um, lets you exile a graveyard or uh, exile the top three cards of your library. And, and until your next end step, you can play those cards. And then we have a board wipe with Burn Down to House, but it also lets you create the um, three one one red devil tokens um, for the lands it's pretty much the same as that original deck uh, from the previous standard season with river Tears outlook uh, see towards proving ground some of the uh, land fixing dual lands uh, for each color um, got uh, six basic lands two forests two mountain two swamps uh, Bose, uh, Boseju who endures the four Argoth sanctum of nature um, and Takanuma Abandoned Mire, which is really useful for getting back a creature or planeswalker if you need to. Um, so I'm going to give this a shot at uh, just playing it in regular play against the competition. I've noticed that uh, there's a wider range of decks on there, and this deck actually, it might not be quite ready for prime time on the ranked ladder yet, uh, just due to uh, how new the format is and just working out the kinks of the deck, but I want to give it a shot and see how it goes. And I think uh, moving forward for some of my other videos, um, I'll be a little bit more conservative with uh, what I take onto the, onto the ladder and what I just do for regular play. Some decks just aren't uh, ready for uh, playing ranked play, yet they and they still need either to be fleshed out a little bit more or uh, they're just their concepts and their their deck type are just not uh, competitive enough uh, against some of the higher decks. But I still want to be able to explore all the different deck ranges. So, um, And, and we'll, we'll, I'll feature some of those decks in uh, best of ones, maybe do uh, best of three with sideboards to uh, show the, the next level of the deck, and even uh, taking it on to um, a deck deep dive into uh, concept, to construction, uh, to playing ranked play, and then finally in, in a full-on event and uh, playing it that way. So uh, it'll give other decks uh, fair shots at uh, how they do and um, how they're, how they're uh, flushed out to their optimal form. And for decks that are really uh, solid just to begin with, well, we'll just take them right onto the ladder 
and fight the competition. And if they do well enough, we'll, we'll play some f- few uh, few events and uh, see if we can really cash in on the power of those decks. But so let's go check out the competition and see how this Jund uh, Windgrace Titania deck does, and uh, see if we can get some wins. Interesting opening hand. Um, hmm. I think I'll keep it. Definitely some playable stuff here. Uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and do the proving ground. All my lands will come into play tapped anyway, so might as well do the best one. Looks like we might be playing against a uh, mono black mid range or aggro deck, so we'll need to have an answer for that uh, evolved sleeper pretty quickly. Okay, um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm just going to kill this now. That way they don't get a chance to make it a 3-3. And we'll go ahead and do the premature's outlook. I think we'll get ourselves, uh, we'll get a forest. The mysteries. Don't overthink things. Let's see here. Yeah, I think we'll do the mirror breaker. for now. Yeah, we'll do solo one grace. Yeah, let's see. What lands do we have? Yeah, we'll get a we'll get a swamp. Question is, will they sacrifice Liliana? Yep. Wait, I know when I'm not. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? all the answers for our deck right now. Um, let's see what we can do, though. We might be able to stabilize here. Cutdown doesn't really help us right now, but uh, maybe in the future here.
Yeah, I think I'm gonna... Um... Hmm. I think I'll trade. Children's too... too lethal to keep on the battlefield. And we'll go ahead and put that in the graveyard. There we go. Uh, huh. One card away. Uh, we'll have to pass there. One card away from being able to cast that, so. Oh, they got the win. Too much for us in that particular game. Hmm. I think I'll keep this. We have 27 land in the deck, so the odds of us drawing into um, more land is good. And there it is, so that's nice. Eh. We're off to a decent start. Let's see if we can keep it up here. Go ahead and attack there. Like if you're playing a Boros or a Mardu deck. Um, I'm gonna do this. I mean, we can start gaining life when we put the River Tears Overlook into play next turn. Or we can put that in the graveyard instead. <laughs> nice. Alright, let's, uh... Get a little bit of life there. Yeah, we'll go ahead and attack. Oops. Gotta go to the next phase first. We'll go ahead and attack there. One land in the graveyard. Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and attack there. We have, and yeah, we'll go get a get a mountain, and then um, go ahead and do that, and we'll we'll pass the turn. block with uh, Wind Grace. Hmm. Eh, it's going to die, so we'll have to Go ahead and discard a land card while we can. Let's see what they have. 
Oh, yeah. And we'll pass. Get some lifelink out of that, but I think we'll clear the board. Cause we have another Titania, so we'll be fine. Um, let's see here. Yeah. here. Hmm. Now they've got a removal spell in their hand though too, so let's do the flesh board. Oh, they have to have, they'll have to pay seven life. Um Ditch that. Yeah, let's go ahead and attack there. For the start of our next turn, we should be able to use the blood token to get rid of, uh, get that fourth land. So we're gonna we can afford to pay the life, so we'll just go ahead and get rid of that. And then uh we'll sack the blood token to get rid of this. There we go. Got to see the got to see the meld. They ruined the party though. That's okay, we'll take it. Interesting. Oh, yeah, we'll give it a shot there. Good thing these lands are not legendary, which is nice. this untapped for our cut down if we have to use it. Oh, mm, that stinks. That's fine though. This might be a uh, Delver, mono blue Delver deck we're playing against. That could be pretty annoying. They counter everything we have. But we'll see here. Okay. Um, go ahead and make one of our lands. Creature. We'll attack with that. And 
but um, yeah, I think we're fine there. See if we can kill this thing. Okay, we'll get it this turn though. Um, yeah. attack that. See if they let us resolve that. Yeah, we'll take Liliana. Uh, no attacks there. Gonna have to take some damage from him, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and put that on the battlefield before us. Um. Hated crowds. And I think, um, I think we'll pass there. Ah, I had a feeling they might try that, something like that. Um, yeah, that's fine.
Let's see here. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna block there. I'm tired of your secrets. Yeah, they got the game. We can block one of them. Yeah, I see it. Too much there. Probably should have gone for the burn down the house, but uh, got a little greedy with Liliana. Interesting. Uh, really decent opening hand. Kind of like it. I think we'll keep it. problem. That in the graveyard. I think we're going to read ahead to the final chapter. We'll get the Titan of Industry. Gain five life. That's ugly. I have to be mindful of that card. So it'll become a 7-7 seven, seven if I let it, uh, if they cast that, that spell. Um, 
No blocks. Let's see if they decide to cast antagonize. Yep. That'll hit me for seven. attack there. So the reason why I let them use the antagonize last turn is because I wanted them to use it and then go back down to a normal sized creature because I was gonna, I've always been planning to use the burn down the house and they fell into that trap. They're totally tapped out. So we're gonna take them now. This will end the game if they don't have any kind of answer next turn. guy out of the way. Nah, nah we're not going to do that. And nah, we'll just end it. Took some, uh, took some maneuvering, but we were able to do it. Otherwise, it would have been pretty ugly for us. We got him. Yeah. I think we can go keep this. Like we might be taking some heavy beats next turn. Yep. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah, we gotta block uh, Radha. And we'll take uh, eight. how we got to do it <clears throat> and uh, no attacks there hmm. it might just be too much for us right now not able to stabilize here It'll put us at five, but we're going to take seven, so... Yep. Seven or eight. It's too fast for us. That was a rough one. Alrighty, so that was the, uh, the, the Jund, um, Titania Soul of Windgrace midrange deck. Um, as you can see, it did struggle, uh, against some of the tougher decks. That Mono Red deck just scorched us. Uh, the Mono Black deck really rocked us, too, and then, of course, the uh, mono blue um, Delver. That was a problem as well. We did get a couple wins in there, though. You know, we got in that first game we won, we were able to uh, meld Titania. Um, they saw it, and, and instead of letting us have our moment, they decided to concede. So that's fine. We still got it to, to work. And then that other game where we were able to come back and kind of maneuver correctly to uh, uh, get them to overextend a little bit so we could uh, take them out with the burn down the house and then just smash them with the Titan of Industry. So. But I think overall this deck, with the way the metagame has shifted, I think it needs a bit of an overhaul. Um, looking back, uh, I think Reed Duke's deck was also highly tuned for the metagame, specifically for the World Championships, which which is understandable. I mean, the majority of the field was Esper midrange, so he had to have a deck that was uh, uh, pretty strong against that, and also some of the other decks. But in uh, how wide the standard metagame field is now, um, I do, do think it can use uh, some updates. I would probably put in uh, Renin 7 uh, to really get that land graveyard synergy going. Um, I'd also probably put in a, maybe a few more creatures that let you, that mill you um, putting cards in your graveyard a lot quicker. Um, there's that new Rat Vermin um, from Brothers War. And there's also that uh, Green Elemental that uh, mills the top three cards of your library and uh, lets you get a land in your hand or uh, um, put a plus and plus encounter on it. Little things like that um, that can fill your graveyard up a little quicker. There's also some more reanimation spells from Brothers War that you could use as well. So um, I think it's a deck that definitely, uh, if it's tinkered with correctly, that it could be come back as a really solid power um, and um, uh, kind of take take a chunk out of the metagame field and, and get its share of dominant wins. But um, like I said, it, do, it does need some, some adjustments. Um, and I'll probably be working on it a little bit and try to come back and uh, maybe do another video, maybe a best of three with it, with an updated deck list of it um, before the end of the season, hopefully. But uh, anyway, so if, if you have ideas, uh, this might be a start to uh, work on Jund and make it a little better. I know in the uh, metagame testing winning percentage for it, I had seen that 
It's right around 40%, so if we can get it up uh, into the mid-50s, that'd be awesome. Then it would definitely be a force to rec be reckoned with, so uh, there's your homework. <laughs> but Jund is definitely a fun uh, fun shard uh, color alignment to, to play, so uh, I think somebody will find the right build for it and be able to be able to dominate on the ladder with it. So, But I think that'll do it for this one. Uh, I'll be, be back again soon with some more standard decks. Um, if you like the video, subscribe to my channel, MTG Rogue Players, on YouTube. Hit the like button, uh, leave a comment if you like, and uh, just look for me next time. I'll have some more videos. But until then, we'll see you next time, everybody. Take care.